You did, man. Uh, right on the money, Javier. And uh, say your uh, last name for me, Javier. Jaime. Is that that's two first names? Well, great. Yes, two. Or first, I, get- I, I have three first names actually. Uh, middle name is also common first name. What's your What's your middle name? Well, all right, you asked Orlando. Wow, that yeah, is some. Right. That is that's an ethnic name if I ever uh, heard one. <laughs> Says Sevon Matosian. My my <laughs> mom was a, my mom was a fan of Tony Orlando when I was born, and so that's really where that came from. Uh, who who is that? Was that a singer? I, I think so. Yeah, singer singer in the seventies, sixties, seventies. Um, and I guess they could be last names too. You could be Jaime. Ha- no, no. All all of the above. I've met everybody. I've, there's a baseball player last name Javier. There's a plenty of people first name Jaime, absolutely all over the place. There you go. There's the man. He needs some CrossFit. Not a lot, just a little bit. You know, 10, I don't even know. If, I don't even know if he's still alive. Ten thousand air squats for Tony. <laughs> That's. So uh, cool. I'm glad we opened up with that. My mom will, when she listens to this, will be really proud. All moms are proud, <laughs> uh, no matter what we do, right? Uh. Thanks for coming on. I I was thinking this morning, um, sometimes I have these guests on who've done a lot of podcasts and they're always surprised that we don't talk before the show goes on. And I just wanted to remind everyone that pretty much every (laughs) show you see the every, like, I don't know these people, they don't know me and we just come on and you're watching two people, um, just kind of bump into each other in an elevator and, 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 uh, and have a discussion. Yeah. And so, are you at home? I am. Yes. And are you in Dallas? Yeah, that's right. Like right in between Fort Worth and Dallas. Okay. Yeah, we're a little closer to Fort Worth, but yeah, that's the uh, that's the metro area. And the gym you have there is CrossFit OTL. CrossFit OTL, yes. And what's that stand for? The OTL. On the line. On the line. And is there another organization called like Fitness OTL or or? So, um, what well, is there another one? No, not by me. Um, but, 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 but have you, have you, you get mixed up with another gym? I, cause when I was, when I was digging around on the internet, I saw another OTL and I so, think I want to say it was in Austin or something. Well, you, you know what? We went through a heck of a time coming up with a name, you know, going back and forth with CrossFit headquarters. Uh huh. Um, you know, I probably had about 20 different names before we finally, got to settle on, I wouldn't say settled on OTL before it was one that wasn't taken. It wasn't too similar to another name in the area. So yeah, OTL finally. So I, I, there might be another OTL. I don't think there's a CrossFit OTL. It's not a cross, it's not an official CrossFit, but there is an OTL in Austin, Texas, OTL fitness. Well, you know, I wonder if it stands for on the line too. Is that a common acronym for on the line OTL? I don't know, you know, how, how did you how did you choose that name? Yeah. Um, so initially, the first facility that we were going to move into was going to be a building that was split right on the border of two cities. And literally the border was going to go right in between, the, like right down the center of the building. So one wall is going to be in one city. Another wall is going to be in the other city uh, on the border. Sounded too much like, you know, Mexican food. So. We went I like them. that on the border. So, <laughs> so we went with bring your green card CrossFit. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So we went with on the line. Uh, and then the debate was, do we go with CrossFit on the line, the whole word, or we do the acronym only. And then, you know, when you're affiliating with CrossFit, you have to pick, you have to be really specific. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, it's OTL. I said, okay, so I think OTL is just easier to write yeah. out every time. Well, I like it. And it gives a little conversation because people then can ask you what's it stand for. Well, it has another meaning to us now, actually. So we didn't move into that building after all. Okay. Uh, we ended up moving to another building. It happens to be on the border, again, of two of the two towns, but not like split in the middle. But at one point we said, well, we'll keep OTL because it has like a different connotation to us now. Like the on the line now means for us, like what is on the line like in your life, like what's on the line, like your freedom, mm. your health, your, you know, your, your wellness, your family, all of this stuff is on the line. So our answer to is like, what's on the line. We say everything, everything's on the line. Yeah. So as soon that, as you said that, the, I heard the little voice in my head say my family. 
It's yeah. my family's on the exactly. line. It's always on the line. Precisely. Yeah. And that's really the most important thing to our, our gym. You know, we, we center around the family and um, you know, our, even our membership kind of, kind of shows that. And, you know, I what, think what do you, what do you mean by that? that? What do you mean you center um, around the family and your membership shows by that? Yeah. So, you know, we're, we're at our one year anniversary, like just a couple days ago. Um, and Congrats, dude. That's awesome. Yeah, no, we're, yeah, we're excited. Our, and, and leading right into the, the open, we didn't really do the open last year. So we're leading into the, our first year. We're going to do our first like full official open. When we opened last year, we had, you know, a handful of members that came from our garage. And I can talk about that if you, if you want to hear about that later. Please. Yes. Um, but then as we've, as we've grown, we've grown not only in our, you know, our adult members, but our kids and teens. So we, we do emphasize a lot our kids and our teens program. And I think that has a lot to do with when we started CrossFit, it was a, it was kind of like a family thing. And that's really what's going on here. So, you know, so we have a lot of adults, we have adults with their teens. Um, we have the kids program. Um, you probably, the reason I think that I got connected with you through Chase Ingram is, you know, we, we homeschooled our kids. Um, so we have a lot of a homeschool communities, you know, as well, a lot of kids that are homeschooled that come through our come through our program. So it's really like, you know, a whole family affair. God, did you see, did you saw what happened right there, Sousa? Yeah. It all connected. <laughs> yes. Yes. Javier, this is the absolutely least prepared I've ever been for a podcast in my life. I spent more time <laughs> learning nothing about you last night than I've learned about anyone. You are very hard to uh, dig out information on. And I thought, uh, this morning I was making fun of myself to Sousa before you came on. I said, watch this one. I said, this is literally going to be two people bumped into an elevator. I went through your Instagram. It's very thin. I went to your gym. I'm like, oh, this is going to be. And I'm like, hey, dude, there's got to be some reason I invited him. Like, I know, like he adopted some kids or something. It's something. And then as soon as you said the Chase in your home homeschool, I was like, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It connected. Yeah, that we, was, we've made it already. Yeah, it. I don't have to fish for ninety minutes. We're seven minutes <laughs> in, and I and I know why I love Javier. Yes. Yeah, I thought I would go ahead and put that out there right there. So that God, you you're a good dude. You were smart man, Javier. Smart man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that is absolutely fantastic. Um, uh, how many members to the gym? So we're at 120. In one year. Yeah, we started with 30. That's crazy, so, right, Sousa? Yeah. yeah, yeah, 120 in the first year is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Now again, that's a mix, right? So we have adults. You know, so we, when we say members, we count all of the members. So that's adults, that's teens, fair that's kids, that's some of our personal training clients as well. But yeah, that's a that's 120. Um, I was just having a conversation with somebody about that yesterday. You know, we've had some great months. You know, we've had you know the the net the net increase has been about you know eight to eight to 10 per month. Uh, every now and then, you know, we'll, we'll get a really good month, but we'll also have some people that drop off that move that maybe CrossFit wasn't for them, but yeah, we've been really happy with the growth. Obviously, you know, we'd, we'd like it to be a little bit more, right. Who, who wouldn't, um, we moved into a big, a bigger facility than that. I think that most people would recommend like right off the bat for like a new gym. So yeah. So we got to fill up the space a little more. What's the square footage on that? It's 5,000. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, hey, um, one of the things that's come to my attention recently, and, and maybe every gym does this, but it's more overt at Mayhem, is like uh, Mayhem, they have they they put their values first, like who the character, I guess, of the owners and of the core group of people who run the gym. And you don't necessarily have to have the same values of them. You know, it's not like they're obviously Christian and they, they have these Christian values, but obviously everyone in their, you know, atheists are welcome. They come on this show all the time. Uh, Muslims are welcome. The whole gambit's welcome, but they wear their values on the front. Um, and and I think that's I think that's a good thing. I think open minded people want to be around people with good values, right? Regardless of whether you're Mormon, Christian, or whatever, you want to you want to hang out with people who have good values. It sounds like um, that's what's going on with your gym. That there's some values uh, that you guys wear on your sleeve, whether it be around whatever values got you to do homeschooling or that makes it so it's a a, a family gym. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely we. You know, I would say maybe we don't 
you know, have like a poster on the wall that says here are, you know, personal values. Mm -hmm. I, I think as a gym, you know, we value our members. And so we, you know, when they come in, we want to know why they're there. We want to understand what they're trying to do. And then we really try to cater, uh, not necessarily like customizing programming, but really the message that we have for them about why they would benefit being there. But I think the real, maybe the value that people get when they show up is that we just really do care about their, their growth. I think I'll say like my stories in, in CrossFit has never been about competitive CrossFit. I'm competitive with myself. Um, if we, you know, we dig into it a little bit, like the things that brought us to where we are today have been about lifestyle change, life change, health restoration, and all of those things that have happened, not only with me, but my wife, my daughter, my son, my mom, my sister-in-law, all of people whose lives have been affected because I found CrossFit 12 years ago or 10 years ago. Yeah, and that's, you know, I, I never thought to say that out loud either, but it, uh, I don't know why, but that's 100% me too. I never came to CrossFit for any competitive reason. I was a dude, I really, I really loved going to the Globo gym. I like moving. I like lifting weights. I like the lap machine. I like walking around. I like the drinking fountain. I just like a gym, <laughs> you know? And, and I, and uh, so I would go to a gym and then I found CrossFit and then I was just like, Oh, this is cool too. But, but never for the competitive reason whatsoever, just to stay uh, healthy and fit, I guess. Cause I just liked moving. I guess now that I'm older, it's to stay healthy and fit, but in the beginning it was just to move. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't know about the CrossFit games before I walked into a CrossFit gym. I didn't. I didn't even. Right. Know I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know there was a competition. I didn't know there was an open. I didn't know any of those things. It existed because I think I started like ten years ago. You know. So. That, hey, that, dude. That the, that's on. funny you say that, Javier, because uh, one, neither did I. What there wasn't even a CrossFit games when I started CrossFit. I never even thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> I never even thought of that. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I, I had been doing an outdoor, well, I guess my life had gone through kind of stages of fitness, right? Uh -huh. after, right, right after I graduated from college, um, I started traveling with the company that I worked for. It was like my first, you know, first job. And we were doing, I was traveling all over the country, doing training, you know, week after week, staying in hotels, eating terrible food. And then one day I got home from like a two week long trip and I got off the plane and this is before, you know, uh, the security checkpoints in the airport. So my wife actually met me at the gate and I walked off the gate, hadn't seen her in two weeks. And I was like, so, so looking forward to seeing her. And, and these words are the, the words that really have kind of changed the rest of my life. The first thing she said when she saw me was you're fat. <laughs> it was such a, it was, I was mad. Like you know? PH, mad. PHAT? Yeah, right. <laughs> that would have been nice. That would have been cool, but no. Nope. Boy, you yeah, fat. You, you picked up a gold chain when you, on your trip to Brooklyn? <laughs> That's fat. Oh, yeah. yeah and no, a pair of filas? But no, she said, you're, you're, you're fat. And I, I was like offended. I mean, you know, I was a high school athlete. I was in good shape, you know, but, you know, college had not, you know, I gradually lost any, you know, fitness that I had when I was in high school and college. And, um, and then I got out and went, and then at that moment, I decided that I needed to, to, well, for, after I was angry and mad and upset and, you know, butthurt about it, then I decided I needed to do something about it. Um, and, yeah. you know, I had been working out off and on through college. So it wasn't as, and this is right after college. So it, it wasn't like I, you know, I didn't know what to do or how to do it. So what did I you started, do in college, Javier? You played, you played collegiate sports? Oh, gosh, no. no. Oh, oh, no, I went to the University of Texas at Austin. I had no, I had no, thought or ambition that I could play like D1 football. Like I, I knew that wasn't in the cards for me. I mean, I was a good football player in high school, but just, you know, I didn't think about doing, I wanted to be an engineer. So I went to an engineering school. So okay. And I, then, you, and you exercise through college though, is what you're saying? I, yeah. Off and on. Yeah. Yeah. Off and on. Yeah. Not, not, nothing formal, nothing fancy. Hey, were you fat or was your wife talking uh, like hyper? No, I, I, I mean, you know, like right now I'm, you know, about 180 pounds. Maybe. How tall are you? Five ten. Oh yeah, that's that's good. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm I'm that would kind of fluctuate, you know, between single digit and you know, low teens and the body fat, depending on how things are going. Wow. Um, but then I was probably a good two fifteen. Okay. Yeah. So I mean you yes, know, that's forty that's thirty five pounds more. Yeah, yeah thirty five pounds more for sure. A, a fluff, not not yeah. A yeah, yeah. I mean I wasn't strong yeah, it wasn't like I was training for strongman or something, you know. Like, <laughs> that's or, basically that's one of those big bags of dog food you were carrying around everywhere with that, you. That's right. Yeah, that's it. I was in, in 
so so then I um I found or maybe I didn't you know I mean I've been reading I've been I've been into working out since I was 15 16 you know and you know the only the only authority you had on working out back then was like muscle and fitness magazine Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. it and then I, I remember finding in one of those the uh the advertisement for um body for life from bill phillips you guys ever knew you ever know about that no uh, maybe if i it, saw a picture it was it was the e, eas supplements and i remember them a body transformation challenge and i said well i'm gonna i'm gonna do it right so i did like the before picture and then i went and you know put my engineering hat on and then figured out how to calculate macros and kick put it this spreadsheet together and then backtracked how long it would take for me to get to a single digit i had this uh little handheld body fat thing. And I figured out and like, okay, I was at whatever I was back then. There you go. That's the, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I recognize him for sure. Yeah. No, that's it. Like, I think he's a vegan now. I don't know. I'm not sure what he's doing these days. It's all a journey. It's all a journey. Yeah. Wait, wait. So, so I figured out how to, um, well, I, I went on this program. I had like three, three protein shakes a day. Three, I was doing the six meal macro counting, you know, thing. This is back in 2000, I guess, or 98, 99, 2000. So I figured out how to do all that stuff, lost all the body fat, got to about the same composition I am now doing, doing that back then. Uh, and then I was working out and I moved out of a, like a, I would say a global gym. I moved into an area that only had a YMCA, a rec center. Mm-hmm. And I was working out at the YMCA and then somebody asked me, um, I guess they saw me working out. They saw, you know, what, what I was doing. And they said, Hey, would you, do you want to be a trainer here? I'm like, what, what do you mean? Like, no, well, I mean, I'm just working out here. They're like, Oh, well, you seem like, you know what you're doing and you've been helpful to some of the members here. You know, will you consider doing that? And I said, well, I guess. So um, yeah. So I somehow got myself certified to coach at the Y. So for until my kids were born, which was probably about a good three or four years every morning at the YMCA from like five to six and six to seven, I would, train people in the morning and then seven to seven to eight i would work out and then did you like that hey was that your first time dealing with people because i mean both both it was your first time kind of dealing with the public and also you liked it yeah no i loved it i mean it was i mean i loved helping people so i mean you know i really you know i learned how to put together workouts and programs for people i figured out how to you know how long it would take to do you know set you know this is all you know splits right like you know chest and back and all the yeah and so I, I figured out how to get all of that stuff and compact that into an hour and put people through a warm up. And it was great learning. It was probably a better experience in learning about people. It was like a therapy session most times, most days. You know? Yeah. And, and how old were you? 25. And they were your basically your guinea pigs. They like yeah. both. They were your they were your uh, original students and they were lucky yeah, they were I guess, my, to find you. Yeah, they were my original. I remember how old I thought they were. They're probably younger than I am now. <laughs> they, they were, they, you know, all my clients were, you know, middle-aged men and women, you know, whatever, mid, 40, mid-40s, mid 50 years old. Like back then, I was 25. Hey, what ethnicity are you? Uh, Mexican, Hispanic, Mexican-American. Yeah. And are, were, were you born in the States? Yeah, yeah. My, uh, I was born in uh, Corpus Christi, raised in San Antonio. And, and you have blue eyes? Yeah, greenish. Yeah, green. And, and uh, what color your wife's eyes? Uh, hers are blue. She is she is not Hispanic. Oh, what is she? She's an English mutt, you know, like German right. English or something. You, you you wanted to wait to be married for twenty five years before you ask her. Leave something for the end. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> I don't know what her. She refuses. She refused to do any of those like you know, ancestry things that test her blood. She's like, I'm not giving anybody my. Yeah, I'm not doing I, that I, either. I, I hey, did. use a fake name, by the way. If you ever do that in, in moving oh, forward, you, you yeah, use a fake name. We we had some family members because you don't want like your your uncle John who killed someone twenty say. years ago going to jail. <laughs> you get family coming out of the woodwork on that. Well, one. You know, know, before, before I was before I was wise enough for that, I used my real name and I ended up getting an email from somebody that says, "Hey, uh, we're related." And I'm like, "Okay," and my wife's like, "Ignore it. Don't answer it. It's like <laughs> They're gonna try to kill you." And so. <laughs> I didn't answer. And then later I get another email from the same person that says, Hey, um, I was just looking over my husband's shoulder. This is crazy. His crosses with CrossFit. I was looking over my husband's shoulder at his CrossFit leaderboard and I saw your name on it. Do you know this guy? And I'm like, Holy crap. Yeah. 
like the small world. So this person that said she was related to me that I ignored, literally just a couple of weeks later was looking over her shoulders, husband at the leaderboard at our CrossFit gym, saw my name and, and it turns out, yeah, that it's like a really crazy story. Yeah. So not only are you related to him, but, but she, well, I was related to her, but her husband works out with me. I knew the husband pretty oh. well. I worked out with him. I worked out with oh, him shit. for a couple of years. Wow. And were you like, hey, sorry, I ignored your wife. Yeah. My, wife made, my wife made me do it. <laughs> Ever since I got money. skinny, my wife doesn't let me talk to other women. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I did meet up with her and her and, and him. And, you know, she had some actually really interest, this interesting information about the history of our family that nobody on my family knew about. And I talked to my mom about it and she was like, holy crap, I didn't know that. So oh, are, is your mom born here in uh, Mexico? Uh, uh, in the United States. Yeah. We're probably like fourth generation Texan. You know, uh, I don't have any family that I know of at all in Mexico. Um, my grandparents were from Laredo. So which that's right on the border. So I would, right. yeah, maybe, uh, maybe their parents might've been, but I don't. Hey, how far are you from the border now? Not far. I mean, Dallas is, I don't know. Uh, I mean, well, if you go due west to El Paso, that's a nine hour drive, you know, but that's, okay. Okay. Yeah. So you don't have people coming through your, do, do you feel any of the influx of immigrants coming in? Yeah. Oh, uh, they get, yeah. They, I mean, not necessarily in my community. Um, but I know, you know, the Dallas Fort Worth area, I mean, the, the, all of the kind of like Texas cities have kind of transformed over the last, you know, 15, 20 years. When, when I was young growing up in San Antonio and Corpus, you know, there was, there was always, you know, the, you know, kind of the derogatory terms for the people that were coming across from Mexico and stuff. And it was, um, it was smaller and the community wasn't as small. Like if you were in Texas and you were, you know, raised in the seventies and eighties, like I was, you know, you were a couple of gener- especially if you're in San Antonio, Corpus Christi, you know, you're, you're one or two generations in Texas. That's pretty standard. Uh, that's not as much the case anymore. There's- because the numbers are crazy. And they're not even Mexicans. It's like 95% like just oh, other yeah. other yeah. people coming across the border. But the, uh, I mean, the numbers in the pictures, obviously I haven't been down there, but the numbers in the pictures are nuts. You would think that, I mean, I remember, I went to school in California as a little kid and then, uh, you know, first, second, kindergarten, first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth grade. And I always remember there being at least one or two immigrants in every single class I took minimum. It, and not Mexican either, actually. Now that I think about it, it was like usually Asian. But there's always one or two kids in the class that didn't speak English. So I figured if you live in Texas, God, it's got to be every class growing up when you were in school, there must have been someone in there who didn't speak English so good. Not not necessarily for us, at least not the age that I was. I mean, maybe now. Okay. How old but are you now? Uh, 48. Oh, okay. So we're about the same. You graduated in 92. I graduated in 90. 93. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and, and you've I, never I left back, Texas. I would say back then, I would say back then, my, um, this is my pure guess, right? I'm not, I'm no authority on this at all. I would say if you were crossing the border and you did not want to be close to the border patrol, you skipped all of the southern cities in Texas and went past them. Oh, right. I, okay. Right. Okay. Like you, you know, but yeah, ma- makes sense. Right. Yeah. Um, and uh, and you've never left Texas. Um, well, correct. I've lived. I've been a resident of Texas my whole life. Um, I did spend like a summer in Berkeley doing a research. I'm a sorry. Lab. It, was, <laughs> it was a crazy experience, man. It was very different. Very different. Yeah, I lived, uh, I lived there right on campus, like a couple blocks from Telegraph Ave. And I worked up in the, at the lab on the, on the hill. I spent many, 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 many days and nights uh, in that area. And, and did you ever visit People's Park? What year was that you were there? Do you, do you remember? That would have been like my sophomore year in college, so like 95. Yeah. But so like the summer of 95, I think, or the summer. Yeah, that sounds about right. Summer God, what a, what a small world. Yeah. Uh, d- you didn't meet your wife there, did you? No, we actually met in high school. Oh, okay. Wow. But not until our senior year. Not like so the end of my – we were in a big high school, like class of like 600 or something like that. Um, we did not meet <clears> until <throat> – like the very end of our senior year, even though we were at the same high school for four years. And she was the same grade as you. Yeah. And and, and you, you hadn't seen her your freshman, sophomore, junior year, or you had, but just never paid her any mind. If I did, I didn't really, we were like in two different circles. Like I was on the football team and she was in the band. 
you know, okay. so it's like, you know, we like, we're never on the same bus, never on the same schedule, never practice on the same field. And somehow we were never in the same class. I don't, you know, so don't know how that the happens. dudes on the football team don't, uh, pluck, pluck the girls off from the band dudes <laughs> from, the, from the band. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. You know? Uh, we're taking your girls guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She was in the drum line. She was like in the cool part of the band, apparently, is what I'm told. I don't know. Right. That's what everyone says. Yeah, the drum band. line. That's it. That's so what everyone yeah, yeah, says. Yeah, cool she, the... she didn't play the trombone. She was in the drum line. The <laughs> only cool part of the band is the football players who date the band girls. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and um so so you get so you get off the airplane and she tells you that you're uh gordo. Yeah. And um, and and you were pissed, like like you thought it was rude of her. I thought it was rude. Yeah, yeah. Then I did something about it. How long did it take for you to? How long did it take for you to kind of flip the script on that? Did you start working out even before you when you were still mad at her, or did you come to? Well, I I never really ever stopped working out in my life. I just really started paying attention to my nutrition. Honestly, Mm. I probably worked out less over the next ninety days that I was going through that transformation that I was working out before the program. I really spent more time focused on my nutrition. And what did you so, stop eating? Um, sugar, for sure. Yeah. Like, um, I mean, processed foods. I mean, I was, that's what, that's when I first learned, all, you know, meal prep. I mean, I used to cook, you know, like a dozen chicken breasts on the weekend and I'd meal prep for that. And then I would pre-cook like wild rice and this, and you know, whatever. I really, I had my macros late, you know, fully set up to where I had the meals pre-planned but I'm kind of my theory back then was if I could if I was eating six meals a day if I could eat five of them that I would know every single day exactly what they were going to be then the <laughs> dinner was the only one that was kind of left for chance and at that point I mean I, you know I really wouldn't go overboard so that that seems so as long as I knew five out of my six meals so three of them were protein shakes one was breakfast one was lunch dinner was up in the air every day but uh, Beyond that, the five were always in control. So I knew exactly what I was eating and I was tracking my weight and my body fat the whole time. And, you know, I got did to, I got did she give you any feedback? Like after, a, did she ever like retract her statement? Like after like a month, she was like, oh, you look good. Did you ever get like a, like, yeah, you know, I like those signs you drive into the national forest and it tells you like if the fire, fire, uh, the, <laughs> the chance of fire was she like, oh, I'm moving the needle over. You're not fat. You're just yeah, yeah, like, you're in yellow zone. zone. She, yes. You know, like when you're in the same house with somebody, sometimes you don't like notice the, the obvious cha- the changes right away. I mean, people right. were definitely noticing. And I think, you know, the, because people were noticing, you know, then she obviously recognized that. I mean, yeah, I definitely wanted to please her. She was my wife. But I also knew that I didn't want to be. And, you know, this brings up the whole story of my my whole family and kind of like what happened growing up for me. And I didn't want to be like the rest of my extent you know extended family they're all sick like you know the you know that whole with chronic disease yeah absolutely chronic disease i mean so almost every one of my every one of my my parents siblings you know have diabetes you know or some form of chronic disease you know they're all on medications they're all struggling and i just i grew up seeing that um and i didn't i just knew that i didn't want to do that were you ever a fat kid no, not at all. No. I was actually a pretty thin kid. I mean, uh, they used to actually make fun of me when I was young because my family was all bigger. They used to call me Flacco. They used to because I was too. They thought I was too thin, you know. So it's not really like in my, I guess, real genetics. Like I didn't have to worry about that. I was like the the, you know, you know, out in in the seventies and eighties, or especially in like the early eighties. You know, the kids that would just run around in the neighborhoods. You know, kind of like. Yeah, that was me. Yeah, me. You know, I mean, we were climbing trees, jumping fences. You know, I'd ride my bike for hours away from home, like just come home for dinner. What did you ride? What do you remember? What you rode? Oh uh, yeah, man, a Haro, a, a nice. BMX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was a freestyler. Yeah, I used to do all the tricks and the and the quarter pipe rides and stuff like that. I used to skate too. I didn't skate, but I had a I had a mini goose and a mongoose. Yeah, I had a mongoose. Then I bought a Haro FX that had the coaster bike you know whatever you know you spin the handlebars and oh i never got any cool shit like that the gyro (laughs) yeah Yeah, yeah. and i was a kid like 
I went to the the bike track by my house and just watched. Like I never once got on. It. Never, not just once. Just watched. Never. Yes, just watched. I was that. No, kid. man. We no, we loved it. I was. Uh, I, I. I mean, I remember. So, but I won't say where my friends and I got all of the plywood and the wood supplies. But we just came across a it. supply of them. Yes. And we, and we built a quarter pipe in the back in somebody's backyard. Like we just built it and started riding. Wow. And then the parents were like, uh, you can't have that here. And then we fully disassembled it and moved it like a whole block over and then put it in my backyard. Wow. And, you, and your parents were cool with that? Yeah. Yeah, they were fine. Yeah, those are that's good parents. Hey, that's smart parents, too, because then the kids are at your house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were doing the – we were riding the back. And then eventually my dad's like, you know, I, mean, I don't know what happened. We need the wood. <laughs> so we <laughs> so we tore it down. Like, we <laughs> built a fire. I mean, Probably nobody was riding. Ran. You know, at some point, nobody was riding anymore. Yeah. I mean, it was engineered by – let's see. I'm trying to think of how old I was. I would have been in the sixth grade or seventh grade. I mean, I was like – I built it like me. And my, yeah. My that's kids. impressive. Yeah. So, you know, we, we designed, we designed it. I would have looking back now, I would have changed the, the slope the slope. Yeah. Cause it was, like, I'm a grown ass man and I paid someone $10,000 to build a, a, a wooden ramp in my, that's, uh, on, that's a mini ramp. That's a, that's still, that's a the guy deep. came over, the guy came over the bag of nails and I got scared. I mean, that's, I mean, I, <laughs> I need testosterone. House. I need testosterone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty good at building ramps. Um, yeah. My uh, my son, when he started skateboarding when he was younger, I built a little, you know, just a little kick ramp uh, that we put in the street because I wasn't going to build one of those big ramps. And I and we put it and we had it in the street in the front, and they were a kid, they were kind of riding up, and and him and his my nephew. He he lives right. My nephew lives right across the street. He is um, he is the son of my wife's twin. So my okay. wife's twin lives right across the street. So that's another story. We have twin, twin siblings. Well, anyway, this ramp was out in front, right in front of my curb. And my, uh, me, my brother-in-law. Do you know how weird that is to be married to a twin? Like where my brain goes? Like it doesn't even like, they're just the same. Anyway, <laughs> I knew you were going to be stuck. About I know. I, like, I, I just stuck. Like if my life. wife had a twin, I would be just tripping. I would be <laughs> tripping. But go yeah. on. If, yeah. if you go to our Instagram feed one of the and, and look at all six posts which of the six no, posts what, yeah i know well look look you have to talk to my son about that like we had a lot more posts and he was like oh i need to clean this up so he cleans it up but uh, he probably knows too he archived it so goofballs <laughs> like me don't dig into your history yes yeah he he archived like some of our you know some of the posts he's like those are all not a, like one of the earlier posts there's two women at the bottom when we're like getting started in the blue that's my wife in the front. okay but so we're standing out in front of the house talking because the boys were like kind of on and off on the ramp and it was me my brother-in-law and then my neighbor and we were just talking standing there on the sidewalk and then out of nowhere a lady drives down the street and drives her two wheels up onto the ramp and literally does like a dukes of hazards on her side for a split second and then <laughs> oh shit complete, she didn't see our ramp i mean you know this was like a little <laughs> kick ramp right she didn't see the ramp and so she <laughs> rode up the ramp kicked up two wheels and we're all just absolutely shocked. That's amazing. And like our funny thing is that our first response yeah. was to look at the ramp, go, oh man, is the ramp okay? We're like, oh, maybe we should go check on the lady. The ramp held up, by the way. So Hey, for those of you who don't know, there was a time in my life and Javier's life, I don't think Sousa's life, where once a week when you watched on TV there would be a stunt where a car drove on two wheels. It was like a two or three year period. It was in every show, Knight Rider, Dukes of Hazard, yeah, Chips, sure. The Incredible Hulk. It became, it was like this thing now that you mentioned it where like just stunt guys just figured out that like, yeah. hey, we could drive a car on two wheels. And they started doing that. Do you remember that? It was like in every show. Oh, yeah, oh look, sure. there's the car on two wheels. Oh look, there's the car <laughs> on two wheels. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be chasing each other on two wheels. You're like, yeah, dude, right. okay, we get that's it. Right. And then you get a glimpse of the driver, and it wasn't at all the actor, right? It wasn't yeah. like, right. Have a helmet right. on, yeah. <laughs> right? It was somebody else. Like, <clears throat> yeah, for sure. that's so weird. That's gone. That era is gone, right? That doesn't impress anyone anymore. Pro pro no, no. Now they've got to jump off of a building, or you know, yeah, you know, the two wheel driving. That's so funny. 
Hey, um, I have these black uh, plastic uh, ramps, a, a ton of them, that, and you assemble them together like Legos. They're big, yeah. and you can build like bike ramps. Or, and I always get concerned leaving those in the street for that exact same reason. Well, some go. car's not going to see them and drive drive up on. And I think we, on. By, we caught it on video camera. My well, not what we did. My my sister in law's like security camera like actually caught the car doing it. Wow. It's, oh. on, it's on it's on her i think it's on her instagram but she if, your, if your son was really good he'd put it on his instagram put it on no put it on your youtube and get like a million views off that so no we should well you know yeah. it still exists but we can do that we'll go put that yeah. upload it as a short <laughs> and i'll sell the uh the integrity of my ramp building because yeah. it, it's still good uh, javier when you um when you started dating your wife in uh your senior year did you guys both know you wanted kids now nah, I don't think we were that mature to even be thinking about that stuff. I know that she probably did. Yeah. Um, I never, I, I probably never thought that far ahead. I didn't, I never thought that I wouldn't or that I would. Yeah. There you go. That's us. It's my son. Damn. Wow. That's a good looking family. Yeah. You didn't see her at high school. <laughs> yeah. She, she, yeah, but she's, she's beautiful. Now I'm yeah. now I'm thinking about when she called you fat. It's like ten times as bad. Yeah, 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 <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. When a pretty girl calls you fat, it's horrible. You're like that is yeah. That was a blow, man. That was definitely. <laughs> yeah, for but sure. hey, look, it it changed the whole course of history. It changed it changed everything. You know, you know though, because like you're starting to have to like if you have a belt with holes in it, you know. All of a sudden, like the, that day when you put use a hole that you've never used before, you're like, oh, this, something this isn't cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, cool. I, I, I kind of think it's like for now it, and absolutely like the way clothes fit, but honestly, I work from home a lot now these days, so I don't wear, wear belts that often, but I mean, I can tell like when the burpees aren't hitting right, you know, or I can't get, a, a, you know, I used to be able to do this many pull-ups and now I can do this and I don't attribute it all to like, oh, I'm old and my fitness changed. So I'm like, oh, wait a minute. I'm kind of slacking on some things, you know, and, and right. sometimes it's just like, you know, a couple pounds up and down. Hey, um, in, inflammation is massive to just mood, right? There's, t there's sometimes where you have, at least for me, my desire to work out is just all on my inflammation. So if I'm not inflamed at all, like if I fasted for a day, I I'm excited to move, but anytime I've eaten shit, I'm not excited to move. It, it's, it's uh, a, I don't know if it's subconscious or what, but I, the thought of getting, going through full range of motion, getting my body on the ground, squatting below parallel, all that sounds miserable. Yeah, I talk to people about that a lot because, you know, when they start, when, when you get into the, I'm going to say the, maybe not, you know, the, the habit or the discipline of choosing to work out however many days a week you're going to do it, right? So three days, four days, five days, the choices that you make the day before, you start to be conscious about that choice from the day before about how you're going to feel the next day. Right. You know, if, if you're the kind of person that says like, oh, well, uh, I don't feel like it today, so I'm not going to go because of what I did yesterday. But if you say like, I go every day, I go Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, that's what I do. There's absolutely no if, ands, or buts unless some, you know, something happens. Then, then you start thinking about like what you do the day before. You start thinking about what you ate, what you drank. And, and, mm -hmm. um, and I think that that's, that's part of like the lifestyle change, like the, the, the daily feedback that your body gives you about what you're going to do you know, that day. And I think that just starts to add up over time on like making good and better decisions about your lifestyle. And, and, and it's, and it's, it's, uh, I don't know if this is the right word, but I'll go with it. It's worse as you get older because you're already starting to lose some mobility and some, um, desire to, to just, it takes longer to warm up. I mean, just, just straight up yesterday I had to be, I'm, I've been messing around with dumbbell snatches and, at the beginning of the workout, I pulled out the 70 pound dumbbell and I could barely drag it out to the center of the floor. And literally I warmed up for 45 minutes for And then all of a sudden the 70 pound dumbbell snatch was no problem at all. It was a joke, but literally in the beginning, I'm like, Ooh, I may only do one a minute for 10 minutes. And then by the end I was like, Oh, this is easy. I could do 10 in a row. I mean, yeah. that would have never happened when I was 30. No way. Oh, I mean, I walk, you know, I walk into the gym and I've got to do the warm up routine, um, you know, that's in our programming and I trust it because it works. It gets me warmed up. Who, who, who does that? Uh, we use the corporate, uh, the CrossFit affiliate programming cap. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we, we love it because it's, you're the uh, first person we've had on that uses that. That's awesome. Yeah, oh, really? Yeah. 
Um, yeah, I was on another programming before that. And um, because we have so many new and new CrossFit members, um, what I really liked about CAP was that it has a very clear, like RX intermediate and beginner programming built into it right away. Like I don't, I don't have to think about trying to break it down. And, and I would say most of my members are along that intermediate level to beginner. There's only a couple people that in our gym that are RXing, you know, the cap version of the workout. Right. But yeah. Sorry. I don't and know you really. and you go in and it's just it's just set for you. It's funny. Some people poo poo it, but I like the thought of that too. I like the thought of uh, sh showing up, uh, going over the workout for t twenty minutes or thirty minutes as the coach, just by myself, and then being like, "All right, here it is. Here's the lesson plan for today." Yeah. Someone who's really good has thought it out. Some people well, will it, talk some crazy shit about that and be like, "Hey, you shouldn't open a gym if you're not going to write your own programming." I don't. I don't agree with that at all. Actually. Well. I mean, I think it's a, I think it's a, you, you definitely can appreciate what's in cap if you wrote your own programming. So again, there's a big gap between when I started training and where we are today. And there was a time when I was programming for the people in my garage and it was, it was difficult. So, I mean, I, I definitely commend anybody who does that, you know, for five or six days a week for 10 straight years. I mean, that's, that's some, that's some work. It really is. Um, and then especially when you start thinking about like piecing it together across, you know, not ma making, you know, making it a, a, a program that's progressing people through the month and through the year. And then you also start to, you know, incorporate the warm ups into the workout. And, you know, what we get from people that come from other gyms that are using us when we were following cap is like, they love the flow of the class, you know, and it, it, it's like, it's like doing an L1 refresher every single day which, oh wow wow that's a that's a serious to plug yeah it yeah is. yeah with, it, and we have a lot of new coaches right like we're in young gym you know so you know so our coaches are new like i, I didn't show up and immediately have like you know like five x games athletes or five l1s that are like you know part of it was me and my daughter who were the you know and so we got a couple people how old else. is she how old your daughter she's 20 but okay. she got she got her L one when she was seventeen years old in one month. Wow! Right ah. the, and, and, right and, the line. and Hobart's the one doing the cap, right? James yeah. Hobart. Yeah, I think kind of true. Yeah, it doesn't I mean, get I, much better than that. Well, he oversees it, right? It's his stamp of approval. Oh yeah, it was his whole thing from birth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because it was the hand, the, it was hand, the hand plan before that, right? It Correct. Was yep. And then they yeah. bought it. Uh, Sevy's back with snap with the hunt. Listen, ding dong. I did. I, I probably did 30 snatches yesterday with the 70 pound dumbbell. Like it was my job. I did 10 in a row. Like I was holding back my amazement when you said 70. I'm like, damn, that's pretty good. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm just, it's not a long range of motion. It's like three feet. <laughs> it's very, very, uh, it's very, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to that hundred. It's going to be my next party trick for you guys. You guys are gonna be like, wow. Next okay. Video. Um, so, so when you, when you, you meet your wife and, um, how old were you when you decided to have kids? We were 28. Were they planned? Yeah. You, yeah, you we did ready. plan. Oh, you were ready. You were ready. You were ready. I thought, I thought that, we, you know, I mean, we, we got married pretty young. I mean, we got married is he right avoiding now. the question? Susan, I asked him if they were planned. He says we were ready. Because <laughs> I've never heard anyone say they were ready. I've heard people say they were planned. I've never heard anyone say they were ready. Well, we, we weren't not trying to have a kid. Right. Yeah. Okay. You knew you were yeah. being irresponsible. They were ready. Being responsibly irresponsible. <laughs> no, we were ready. Yeah. They, they were, were ready, ready for the consequences. Now, our number two, the, that one we planned. We're like, let's we were there was a window we wanted to hit a window where they were actually two grade years apart yeah as opposed okay. to three yeah i don't know yeah, why yeah, like, yeah. Was like we like we didn't want them to be three grade years apart we wanted to be two grade years apart so we're like oh we got to get it we got to get on it because we got to get the number two out of here. two two is perfect because then they have the same like things in life happening at the same time but they're far enough apart to where they're not always in each other's business my brother and well, i are four years apart so we miss a lot of kind of life events together like when i go to middle school he was still in elementary school when i went to me from middle to high school he was still in middle school i graduated he came in so you're exactly. kind of at different phases but the two yeah. years a nice mark well, that's exactly what we were thinking. My sister and I were three years apart. My wife and, uh, you know, her sister were, you know, five minutes apart, you know, so we we're <laughs> you know, bridging the gap, right? They were. My twins were five hours apart. 
Really? <laughs> yeah, that's nuts, right? Two, hey, two different days, two different like zodiac. Is that what they call it? Zodiac? Oh, it is two different days. The five hours split. Yeah, the two day. different oh. astrological signs. Do they argue about who's oldest? No, they know. The little one acts like he's like thirty years younger than the older one. <laughs> that, hey, hey, can you imagine this? You knew you were having twins, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, my my wife's mother did not know that she had twins in there. The bogo. Wow. Said. Bogo so when the second bogo. baby came out, she thought she was birthing the placenta. Well, and it was a, you know, I don't, I don't have like the play by play of what happened here at that moment. But he goes deep right away. That's a, <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know what she was thinking. I mean, I, I'll ask her one day. But yeah. yeah you got to hear that story. That's a crazy story. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. There's another human being still in you. What? <laughs> Hold on. We're not done yet. <laughs> Dude, when my wife found out she had twins, it was the craziest. I'd never seen her like for 24 hours. I mean, she we I might as well have told her there were two Chinese spy balloons over the United States. I mean, she was completely uh, freaked out. Two babies in you. What a weird thing. So, so, so you have, so you have, and that's another great thing too. By the way, the concept you brought up. There's this whole part of your life where you're like, okay, I can't get this girl pregnant. I'm not going to have, uh, I have Instagram, believe it or not, Javier's. Okay. Good. Yeah, I believe you. <laughs> he's got seven posts. He does. <laughs> yeah. he, does. Well, but he used to have a lot to, or again, he's, you know, he, he's, he's media savvy. He cleaned hey, up. This is shit. cool. Dave Castro to... <laughs> does that. These cool people think they're going to archive their shit. It's like, all right, be cool. Fine. <laughs> be cool. I told them just like, put, you know, come on. He, um, the, the the other part of like why our gym exists, I'll, we'll, maybe we'll get to that. No, yeah. no, go for it, go for it. I'll just start talking about you and your wife having sex if you don't get me Jeez. back on track. Just go, go, yeah. so go ahead. I'll get to the gym part. Uh, okay, so bridge the gap. Oh, there's my daughter. So there you go. So she's on there too. So no more talking about the last subject. That'd be weird. Yeah, <laughs> they they don't want to know about that. They don't want to know about that. They, I mean, well, let me they... just say this then before we talk about bridging the gap. <laughs> How crazy is it that there's a point, point in your life where you're trying not to get pregnant? And then if anyone's never experienced this other part where you actually are trying to get pregnant, it's awesome. Like I we had I remember it's just like your whole mindset flips and you're like you're, you're it's like um, just indulging. It's just great. I hope everyone at some point in their life is like, OK, we're going to try to make a baby. It's so it's so what a great thing to do with someone you love. It's so cool. Okay, go on. That's it. It is. It yeah. is. Yeah, we uh okay, so I train people in the gym. I was in pretty good shape. Isabel, who just said hi, is born. I'm still training people, still in pretty good shape. At the Y, at the Y, Javier? At the Y, yeah. Okay. At the y. And and then and then uh then life happens, man. And then it just gets busy. And then Nicholas comes along two years later, and then like I I just stopped doing it. I didn't have time. I mean, the kids were young, you know. You know, we were busy. Life was life was challenging, and then just fitness just got away from me completely. Um, and my wife had never been a person that really worked out in the gym; like she never did that. So, so fast forward about you know, I guess six years later, and I'm in the worst shape of my life. My wife is in the worst shape of her life, and we're both now fat, right? We're both now you know relative to us, fat the, the worst shape we've ever been. Um, we went on this family retreat. We took like a family picture of the four of us. Didn't look at anything at all. Like that last picture you guys pulled up and we just look at each other and we both like, go like, Oh man, we're both not in good shape. Um, and then that's when my wife said, she's going to do something about it. And again, she'd never been a person to go work out in the gym. <clears throat> and, uh, and we found out about this kind of outdoor boot camp program that was in the area that people were doing. And so she went and joined that and she just absolutely loved it. It was like five o'clock in the morning. She was going and working out in a parking lot, like rain, sleet, snow, heat, wave, whatever it was, they were working out. And I was like, I've never seen her do anything like that. And she got into amazing shape. I'm like, man, I, can, I need to do that. So then I started doing it and uh, really enjoyed same, that. Same boot camp. You started going. Yeah, with her? yeah. We would go at different times, but yeah, it was just because somebody had to stay home with the kids, but I'm going to, the reason why that's so important to me is because that's, that, that experience is what changed my perception of working out from like, I'm the lone wolf at the global gym, working out by myself in the corner to working out with groups. Like I really enjoyed it. Like I enjoyed working out and being coach led. I enjoyed, you know, getting to meet all these other people. And there was a, they had established a pretty nice community. This was like at the dawn of like Facebook too. Like when Facebook was like kind of growing and stuff. 
everybody would like check in, you know, when they show up and stuff. And you're like, oh, so and so check in. So we started, we did that and I loved it. I got in like great cardio shape, but then I really got to missing lifting weights. And so I said, I really want to, you know, lift more weights. And they're like, oh, just bring a heavier dumbbell, Javier. And I'm like, well, you know, you can only do so much, you know, with a little 20 pound dumbbell, you know, in the parking lot. And then that's when I decided I'm going to try this CrossFit thing. Like maybe I'll do CrossFit. And, and, and oh, do you remember when that popped on your radar? Was it was it sometime during the boot camp classes? It was it was like at well the the boot so the thing about the boot camp classes like they would move around from parking lot to parking lot depending on what business. And I think the we had we had physically moved away from the one that was convenient to us, and so the one that I wanted to go to was no longer convenient. And I think we. It was like a time that we stopped doing that. And I was thinking, well, do I really want to go back and go to another one of these boot camps or do I want to do something different? I really miss lifting weights. I hear they lift weights in CrossFit. So I found a CrossFit gym near me and we started there. Uh, no, were, were you, did heard. you want, were you freaked out about it? Had you, what was your, what was your impression before you went? Um, I didn't even know what to expect at all. Honestly, okay. I, didn't, I had no idea. I didn't do, I just, I remember I found a gym. I went to one and I think this gym did everything they could to try to drive me away because like it was poorly run. I mean, I won't name any names or anything like that. Go it's ahead. Just, that's fine. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it doesn't exist we'll bleep that part out. Go yeah, ahead. Snitch them out. Let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't exist anymore. You know, it's like, well, it's like me Stop. and like, this is again, five o'clock in the morning, right? This is the 5am class. So walk in, the coach wouldn't be there. There was a couple other guys who were, you know, who had been doing it before the workout would be up on a board somewhere and then we would all look at the workout and then we would do the warm up by ourselves. And then like about halfway through the warm up, the coach would show up and he kind of like tell us what to do. And then we would, I'd start doing the workout. And then like a couple minutes later, he would do the workout behind us. Like he started doing the workout. So, Try to catch you like, guys. <laughs> but, but I was really intrigued by like some of the movements. So like, I'm like, Oh, what is this kipping thing? I was watching the guy do the kipping pull up. And then I, and I was decent at pull-ups when I was in high school. So then I started doing that and I figured out how to do the kipping pull up, like, within the first couple of days and I'm like, Oh, this is cool. And then some of the workouts we did, I'm like, this is cool. So I, I, so then I told my wife, I'm like, I really think I like CrossFit, but I don't know if I want to do this gym. So then I found another gym. How did you know away. that that, how did you know that every gym wasn't going to be like that? So that's like one of the big complaints from affiliate owners, right? That it just like someone goes to a CrossFit gym, they get an ass experience and then they think that they're all going to be like that. How did you know just because you have three brain cells? I mean, because some, you're, you're being, well, because everyone, ex what say that again? You're being kind. My wife would say like I have two sometimes. Yeah. Well, it's like, it's like I go to super cuts and I, to get my haircut and I know it's a crap shoot, it, but it doesn't mean I stop going there. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like I just, I get there, I assess it. There's, you know, there's, there's 10 ladies. Right. And, and I, and I just hope that like, I, half the time i'm like god i hope i don't get the blue one with the that's with the fucking 18 nose rings and then i get her and she ends up cutting my hair fine and i was totally wrong yeah. but um yeah, but somehow know. you knew that this wasn't gonna be i mean like if i go to mcdonald's and it's ass like you know they're all ass you're like yep mcdonald's sucks um but you somehow knew that crossfit gyms would be different well, I didn't know. I really didn't know what to expect. Oh. I just called up the other one and I, I, I called up another gym and I, I ended up getting the, you know, the owner on the phone and, uh, you know, and I told him like, yeah, well, I have a little bit of experience. You know, of course, you know, I, I was a trainer back in the day. Right. So in my head, I'm like, I know how to work out. And he's like, well, we still want you to go through our, he didn't call it an on-ramp, but they had some kind of, you know, fundamentals like, class. Yeah. Some kind of fundamentals thing. And we went, went in there and did like a, you know, a little like seven minute, I don't even think it was seven minute, like a little, you know, push up, sit up, you know, sequence. And it about yeah. killed me. It about killed me, even though I'd already done it a few times at the other gym. Right. Um, but then, you know, so we went through that and like the little on-ramp thing. And then I got integrated into class and just never looked back. And I, I totally became like a CrossFit nerd. I, I mean, I watched every YouTube video, mm. watched every, YouTube. probably every one of the documentaries that you, that you produce. <laughs> And yeah, I, I love this. I like gobbled it all up. I, I I watched them all. Like my wife probably thought that I was obsessed. I was what obsessed. year was that? Uh, let's see. So that was ten years ago when I started. So 12, 12 13. When okay. you when you called that other gym, did you know right away when you started talking to that owner like this is going to be a different experience than the other one? Well, for sure because of the. I mean, I, I kind of did because he was he was you know he was. 
first of all, having a conversation with me as opposed to, hey, just show up. Um, then, he, you know, then there was this class thing. I was a little I was a little annoyed by having to do it at first. But then once I did it, I was you know, really thankful for it. You found a value in it. When you yeah. when you search those gyms, did you just literally type in CrossFit gym near me into Google to first find your mm-hmm. few? I'm always curious as like, what's the first entry point? Did you watch it on YouTube? Did you like what took you from knowing about it to then typing it in to find the one nearest to you? Yeah, I think I just Googled CrossFit. Yeah. And there CrossFit, was, you know, there was CrossFit couple, near yeah, me. Google CrossFit. You know, I don't know exactly what I type, but yeah, they're were, they were really, at that time, there were only like a couple in the area. There was one that was probably close enough to reach, but I would have, I would have not been interested in driving that far. Um, mm-hmm. The other one was like close enough that I'm like, okay, that's, you know, that's doable. So, you know, and then that was, so that, you know, that was my, and that was my first experience going into a, you know, a CrossFit gym that was like in the very kind of traditional, you know, CrossFit experience where it was like in an industrial park, you know, in a metal building, no air conditioning, no heat. You got to drive by it four times to make sure it's the right one. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like I'm like, where is this place? You know, I'm like, you know, it's like a little, you know, inconspicuous door you open up and then there's, you know, people in there. I'm like, okay. Yeah. That was it. Hey, there's, there's these, um, there's the gym like that, you, that, and I've been to that affiliate where you go in and you, you're not even sure who the coach is. Like no one says hi to you. It's it's bizarre. There's like a pretty girl and a pretty guy in the back flirting, like, and that's it. And like you suspect one of them might be the coach. <laughs> the shirtless dude's the coach. <laughs> and then there, and then there's the gym where they kind of give you like there's someone going through the motions. It's, it's like Jamba Juice is like this. Like you walk in there and they're like hi, and they just say that to you hi because they're told hey every time someone walks in the door they say hi to you. And then there's the CrossFit gym where it's like the dude's across the room. He's training someone. And he, when you walk in, he screams at you, hey, welcome. I'll be there in two minutes. Make yourself at home. We got If you want a cup of water, there's cup, paper cups and water. And then he gets back and he yells it. Like, you don't have to be like, was he talking to me or nothing? You know what I mean? That's like the three. Yeah. I don't give a fuck about you. I give a fuck because I ha- I'm told to give a fuck about you and like, Hey, I actually see you. Whoa. That mm-hmm. person's like, it doesn't even matter what they say to you. They just saw you and you're just, it takes so little to make a human being happy. Yeah. So little, like well, they that, just that, acknowledge that, that's you rule for us. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's kind of like a staff rule for us. Like, you know, when somebody walks through the door, we say hi to them and call them out by name. You know, that's yes. very intentional. Yeah. And it's a great, some people might be like, well, it's fake and it's insincere. Actually, no, it's actually no. just building good habits and, uh, and, and, and those are one of those things you can fake it till you make it. Yeah. 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 I mean, for some of our younger, you know, staff, right. It's a thing that is definitely, we're asking them to do something that maybe is a little uncomfortable, right? Yeah. Like, challenging for them. Yeah. Yes. It's like challenging. Hey, you know, you see that. So, so not only do you have to say it, but you actually have to know their name, right. In order to mm-hmm. just to do that. Right. And so for us, you know, we ask, we definitely ask people, you know, to, uh, to reserve a spot before so that we see that they're coming, mm. you know, we make it a point to make sure we have a picture on file in our, in our software so that if it is a different coach and they don't know that person, then they can see them, they recognize them, you know, so, so we get, we see it, we see a spot in our, in our, in our app that says that, you know, there's a, they, we don't have a picture for somebody. We make it a point. Let's go get a picture. That way, when they come in, we see them, somebody recognizes them. We don't, they don't come in and it's a new coach and they don't know who they are. But yeah, that's cool to do that. Hey, and the yeah. repercussions or the fallout or the collateral yeah. benefits of, of asking kids to make eye contact and say hi to people is great. At, at that point, if it is uncomfortable for you, then you know, like it's uncomfortable for me. And, and all that does is tell me, hey, I'm the person who needs to practice that the most. Because yeah. it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, um, it should be, it should be second nature for us to acknowledge each other as human beings. It's like the weakness hopper of your of life, right? Yeah, there you go. Whatever you fear the most, you need to do next. Mm. So, um, so you, uh, you, when you and your wife start, uh, so when you start CrossFit, um, and, and you start telling your wife about it, how, how old are your kids at this point? Oh gosh, so they're ten years ago. So ten and you know eight, ten and seven. Okay, and so she's still doing the boot camp, and you're like, "Yo, I did this CrossFit thing. Yeah. I'm on my I'm on my second gym. You should give it a try." Dude, this is all this is all crazy how all this stuff starts <laughs> to come together now, right? So, <clears throat> hey, were you that, homeschooling your kids at this point? We had yes, 
Did they so ever go to public school? I know I'm opening my, another thread, but we'll get back to it. Did they ever <laughs> no, go to public no, school? My, my daughter did. Well, before they went to school, before they were school age, homeschooling was something that we that we thought we were going to do. I was very, you know, I was very apprehensive about it. Yeah, um, me too. It's he, what weirdos yeah, do. It's weirdo yeah, shit. Yeah, neither one of us, I mean, neither one of us had done it. I mean, she wasn't homeschooling. We both went to public school, right? Both yeah, went to public yeah. university. So um, we thought we might do it, but then we said, well, we kind of like gave in. We said, okay, let's put them in school. Now, we didn't put them in public school. We put them in a private school. So they did, uh, my daughter did kindergarten first and second in the private school. My son just went to kindergarten at the private school. And then we pulled them out and we did homeschool. So yeah, at this point. Okay, same for us. Basically same for us. Two years at, a, at some uh, Montessori private school and then yeah, yeah. you're out. So, yeah, so then, we, so then we pulled them out. At this point, we're homeschooling them. Um, and uh, we're homeschooling, but my wife continues to do the boot camp thing. But I go to- Oh, to this day, she's still a boot camper. No, no, no. I, oh. now, no, now we'll no. begin. So what happens was she's doing the boot camp, but instead of doing the boot camp at the campus- one of the coaches for this boot camp thing, he he starts working on the side. So he comes to our neighborhood and then he starts to coach like the boot, you know, outdoor boot camp stuff in our driveway with my wife, my wife's twin sister. He comes to your friends. house to do boot camp with your wife. <laughs> well, he sounds like, like a great guy. <laughs> Don't forget we saw your wife. It's like it's like five people. Like there's five. Okay. So it's him, right. it's him, Good. my wife's twin. Never let it go couple. below ten. Safety in numbers. That's yeah, yeah yes. That's we right. need there's... a chaperone for your wife at all times. So, so they keep <laughs> well, the funny thing is was we keep doing that, right? So she's doing that in the they're doing that in the driveway, like her and her group. And then I would get in my car and then drive off to the CrossFit gym while they're doing their class, right? And then I come back and I'm just like, Y'all should CrossFit. I was yelling, I'm like, Y'all should do CrossFit, right? Yeah. Um <laughs> your then, workout's my warm up. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> you're a dick, Susan, but I love it. Well, and then the trainer quits. He has to leave. He can no longer come to our neighborhood anymore. And so my wife says, "Well, Mandy's you know, list. Why? Why can't he come to your neighborhood anymore?" Well, he he had kids, so he had to like he couldn't come at that hour. He's still a oh trainer. okay still okay. Trainer. The way you made it yeah. sound is like okay, all right, <laughs> the right. or the way I made it sound okay. <laughs> The way we spun it in our heads. That's yeah. Well, the, I think a couple times we did have some people like call, like you know, the neighborhood watch on us on them or something like you know, yeah. taking away from the neighborhood and stuff. Yeah. But no, he he was no longer available during that time, and so then my wife asked, "Hey, can you write workouts for us?" Or she was like, "I could either join the CrossFit gym with you, or could you write workouts for you know for me and the rest of the group?" She asked you that. Yes, me that. Okay. And, and by what? now your garage is building up some equipment and stuff, I'm guessing. Well, at this point we have no equipment, right? They've been looking oh. out in the street. They are oh, not okay. even in the garage. Like they, at this point, they, they're still just doing, you know, battle ropes and hopscotch around the driveway, right? They've never done CrossFit in their life. Um, uh, Judy Reed, Sebon's mind can't get out of the gutter after seeing Javier's wife. There may be uh, some truth to that. Go on. Gosh. It's a Sorry, cantankerous kid. crowd. I apologize, Javier. Yeah, I know. I know. I've, I've been. I've been watching your podcast. Okay. okay. <laughs> he knew. I'm he a clean knows. man, but I. But even a clean man like me has to uh, bring in the dirty sheep, and, uh, yeah, and no. my flock is a little bit vile. I apologize. I was. I was. I was, I was I'm prepared. I'm prepared. Okay. Mentally okay. prepared. I don't know. If I have answers for you, but. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, they, so she asked me to start programming. I, at this point, I'm not an L1 by any means, but I am a CrossFit geek, right? So yeah. at this point. You know, I've like, if, if I didn't know how to do a muscle up and I couldn't learn in the gym, then I YouTube videos and I practiced. If I couldn't figure out how to get my double unders, I practiced, you know, all of the stuff I was teaching myself if I didn't get it in the gym. And so, and so I, I mean, I thought, plus I had the background in fitness. So I said, okay, sure. So then that's when I started writing workouts for them in the garage. We moved from outdoor, the girls. So it was like four women and I think four or five women that started in the gym. And then, so I started writing programming for them and then we bought some equipment. And then next thing you know, we've got, you know, rubber floors in the garage. We've got a rig, we've got pull-up bar, we got weights, we got all kinds of stuff. And then I'm coach, I'm training them. And that honestly, that started six years ago. So we, they, we've been doing that in the garage for, for some time. Um, and so awesome. they were doing that. And so what would happen is I would go work out at my gym, like at the CrossFit gym, not my gym, the, the gym I was working at, I do the five o'clock class. I would come home at six, six fifteen, you know, I'd make a cup of coffee and then hang out. And then about seven o'clock, 
they started their workout and then I would either coach them through their workout or, you know, when I wasn't available, then I would just put it up on a board and they would follow it. Um, would you ever do both workouts? Would you ever do theirs and the cross the gym? No, they didn't want me working out with them. They didn't. Okay. No. Because you would give them pointers like squat deeper and stuff like that or? Well, no, they just, you know, so I, I, I think this is, this also speaks to like one of the, all of these things that we're building up in our experiences CrossFit is what we're trying to build into our gym. And that is that they were afraid to walk into a CrossFit gym themselves. They were afraid they weren't fit enough. They were afraid yeah. of the movements. They were afraid, they were afraid of all of these things. So they just wanted to do it in the, you know, the bubble of our garage because there they didn't, they didn't have the, you know, the, the fear of, you know, either judgment or capability. They're like, Oh, we're just, you know, we're old and slow and this, and we can't do CrossFit. And, we went to a real gym. We would embarrass ourselves. I'm like, no, you wouldn't. You'd be fine. I'm like, okay, fine. So we just, we keep working out there. Yeah. I didn't, I mean, I did what do you, work out then, but what do you think there. about that for the brand? What do you think about that? I, I'm always torn. If I, I always think that we should roll the red carpet out um, as far as we can to people's, you know, doorsteps to get them in, in the affiliate. And then on the other hand, if I hear someone preaching that, um, I, I start to get defensive. I'm like, no, if you're not, if you don't have the balls to like go in there yourself, then um, if, if, yeah, you should be a little bit afraid. It is hard. I'm always yeah. torn. Like the, depending on, I guess I'm always playing devil's advocate. Do you have thoughts on it? I, I mean, I, I think you're, I think that when people decide to stay after they've over that, once they walk through the door for the first time, if the gym, if, if, if the affiliate, family community right if they know that that's the kind that's the way you know if somebody who walked through that themselves and they see somebody else come through the door and they can kind of just sense it in them right they can kind of see it there's a welcoming for those people right and then that i mean the people them. who are really timid yeah the people yeah. who are really timid you know yeah. but but the hard part is getting those timid people in the door those are the ones that we never see right i yeah. don't know the person that just will never make the call mm-hmm you know, for the, you know, there was a time when we would get calls from people and they'd be like, oh, we don't know anything about, you know, we kind of know about CrossFit, but you just want to come and check it out. And I'm like, really? You don't know anything about it? Like, I was really excited to hear about people who didn't know anything about it. I'm like, right, me too. Yeah. Um, but for the others, what happens is as soon as they would tell somebody, and this is, you know, this is the challenge, I think, for many affiliates, as soon as they go and tell somebody, hey, I'm going to go try CrossFit. The first thing they say when they come in the door is they say, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm interested in it, but everybody tells me that I'm going to get hurt. Like, oh, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt. Mm -hmm. Like, well, who told you? <laughs> hey, this is a great uh, line. Look at this, Javier. Someone put in the comments. I CrossFit is comments. wasted. CrossFit is wasted on the fit. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a that's a that's an interesting. Uh, that's a that's great an interesting line. Yeah. Line. Yeah. Because yeah. the glass I mean, ceiling is just so high for anyone who's afraid to come in. Like, yeah and man how lucky are they if they come into your gym it is a failure on any affiliates part if they lose someone by hurting them right like you really fucked up by hurting them i mean um on the first day if someone walks into your gym on the first day you have to be able to capture them that's like yeah you have to have the you have to be have good and it's not one size fits all right if mm -hmm. there is someone who comes in there who doesn't if you don't challenge them enough they might get frustrated but if there's someone and you challenge them too far um they won't you have come to back yeah. Well, when you're growing the gym initially and you want every lead to come through to become a member because you want to get your membership up, you know, um, you know, you, you want everybody and you try to make them fit. And I think, you know, now it's not to say we don't want, you know, everybody. We want whoever, you know, is, is, is going to go through the journey with us. But what we're, what we're finding is that there are definitely people who are coming in that just have the wrong kind of motivation. You know, they just don't have the right um, you know, the right mindset. And so can't you trick them? Can't you, I mean, do, I mean, can't you um, manipulate them because eventually it, it will click for them, won't it? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, we, we, I mean, we definitely will take people through the process. I mean, for us, our goal here is if somebody does not have any CrossFit experience, you know, we bring them in, you know, we're following the two brain, no sweat intro, you know, kind of, you know, process. Right. So I'm, I'm on a, the two brain mentoring program. And so, you know, we, we do everything we can to get in touch with them as soon as possible and to get them in person in the gym so that we can have that conversation and really get to know one another and see if it's, and see if it's a fit. And, you know, I think that we're finding, you know, there's some people that are interested in, um, you know, just getting a workout in and we're like, okay, good. Like 
I, I want to bring you in because I, what I want to do is I want to bring you in and I want you to get to learn about what CrossFit is. And it is really a more of a, it's a lifestyle, not just a place that you work out, you know? And then once people are into that and they can cut to see it and they kind of get the energy from the community, then it's great. But then there's others that are just like in their mind, they've got this mental block already. Like, I just want to know your price and I want to know how much it costs. And you know, if, you know, if you're out, you're out of my range, you know, you're too high. I'm like, okay, well, I mean, I mean, I'm pretty competitive with all the other CrossFit gyms, but if you're comparing me to Planet Fitness, okay, sure. You know, can't help you. Um, you, you said you do two brain. Well, um, how, how long have you been doing that? Why did you do that? So, th so this goes, you've been like course. for anyone who just joined, by the way, the gym is exactly at its one year anniversary, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Four days, three days plus. Yep. Exactly. Um, well, so I'm going to bridge that gap for us here. So we were working out in the garage with my wife. Then my son started football and I started coaching him in football in the homeschool football team. There's a, there's organizations that, you know, have homeschool, you come together and then there's volleyball, football, basketball teams. I had no group. idea. That's cool. Do they play the regular high school football teams? They, well, so we were in a six man program. Okay. Um, okay. And so yes, we did, but high school, public schools that had, six man teams are out on the edge. It's like country boys out, you know, like an hour and a half outside of Dallas. Okay. Um, so we played a cut. So our six man team played a combination of public schools that are way out there. You would consider them one, a schools, private schools, charter schools, or other homeschool groups. Okay. But he was no longer able to work out at his CrossFit gym. He was a CrossFit teams member because it conflicted with football practice. And so in their first year of foot, his first year of football, he did not do any workouts what, during the season and him and his buddies that CrossFit it together that were in the teens program, they lost like 25% of their strength throughout the season. And so we decided that, Hey man, why don't you just do a strength program in our garage with your buddies? And so, so then we started, so then I started programming a strength program for him and his teammates, some of his teammates, and they come to the garage and start working out. So now we have a nine o'clock, a seven o'clock women's class now i have a nine o'clock um teens class or let's say homeschool boy football team class right um and then we decide okay my daughter is we're choosing and this is kind of the big thing this is kind of like the story behind what we're doing here um my daughter and my son aren't going to college so what are they doing instead but we said, okay, we're going to kind of double down on something that you guys are already quasi experts in at a really young age, because we've been living this lifestyle of CrossFit. Like they know CrossFit movements. They know CrossFit really well. We've been living this lifestyle of healthy eating, healthy sleep, healthy recovery. You, you know, we did everything in the, you know, we did everything that's kind of in the, uh, revolving around the kind of the CrossFit type nutrition program. So as a family, we did the zone. Um, we did paleo. Uh, we did intermittent fasting. We did keto. We did now carnivore and, you know, lion. We've, we've seen them all. So, and, and my kids have gone That's so all. cool, by the way, doing all that with your family, just taking the journey, exploring just all the different he healthy lifestyle things that are being put out there, not being afraid. That, what a cool thing you're doing with your family. Yeah. And they, and they know it all. So like, it's not just like my wife and I went through this whole process ourselves. And honestly, when we, the day that I started CrossFit, she started, she was about to go and have surgery on her, uh, in, in, for, in her throat for, to correct like reflux. She was get she, she, she had been actually, after she had my son, she was sick for years. She just didn't feel right. She had skin problems. She had gastric, she had GERD, gastro, whatever that GERD, whatever. It's like a gastrointestinal reflux disease. I think what that's called. She and her sister both suffered from that. And, uh, and they were both miserable with it. And when we started CrossFit, that's when we found out about, um, paleo or, you know, and we, and we, it, what, if, even though she didn't do CrossFit, we went on this kind of 30 day elimination diet and we went paleo, right? So we got rid of, you know, sugar, alcohol, drug, I'm not drugs, like sugar, sugar, alcohol, <laughs> grain, grain. Uh, cut that, cut that clip, cut that clip. Well, actually in a way, yes, because we, she actually, we got rid of the medications that she was on to correct all of, she was on all of those things. So she got rid of all those things. And within days, her skin cleared up, her GERD went away, her headaches were gone. And all we did was just eliminate grains, sugars, and 
you know, we basically went paleo. And so she got God, cleared. I love this. She got cleared because of that. And so that got us committed and that like brought the whole family. And so like, okay, now the whole family's on it. And, you know, and it was, it was a challenge because we were doing things kind of counterculture, right? We were already homeschooling that already kind of made us quasi weirdos, right? Now I got my family on paleo and my kids aren't eating sugar. They're not eating. Yeah, you, you don't eat canned candy. beans and, uh, and, um, uh, what's that pink stuff? Cotton candy and people hate yeah, you. Yeah. 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 So, so <laughs> become the enemy. So my family has eliminated all of these things and that's the lifestyle we're living. It it kind of made us, you know, kind of made us a little weirdos, you know, the the groups. It was, it was kind of challenging at times. Especially in Texas, right? Yeah. Well, and my my kids were young and other, and not only do not other kids not understand it, other kids' parents didn't understand it. Right. And, And in fact, they would almost, it would almost be offensive to them that our choice to not eat those things was almost like an insult to them. Like, I, I look, I'm not picking on you. Like, I, we just choose not to eat that, right? We're not going to eat that. Our kids aren't going to eat that. That's so weird how people get that way, though. Oh, like, it doesn't yeah, affect people them People think at I'm all. abusive because <laughs> like, I don't yeah. let my kids drink juice. Yeah, they get my like, kids have so no desire defensive. to drink juice. Yeah, crazy. They, they you know, uh, people. <clears throat> I mean, uh, I mean, the, the, some of the things that might have been. So it, it was a challenge for my for my kids there, you know, to at times because they were the they were the different kids. Right. You know, the people used to think, oh, like, you know, you're holding them hostage or something. We're like, look, we're just teaching them how to be healthy. And, you know, the whole family history that we have, that my wife has in our family of people being sick, chronic disease and stuff. We're like, we're just, we're, we're trying our best to avoid that. And mm-hmm. if I wait until they're, you know, 25 to, hey, you should try this. I mean, how hard is it when they could do it now? Hey, this is the healthy response when people hear that too. I want their kids to be friends with my kids. Yeah, the, of course. We all want our kids to be friends with Javier's kids. Those are the kids those are the kids you want your kids to be around. Well, and so so they're again, my point is they they become, you know, at a very young age very knowledgeable about all these things. Right? Because we didn't just tell them what to do it. We told them why we were doing it. And we read the books together or we read the stuff together. We read the stuff that might've been in the CrossFit journal. And in fact, my daughter's senior thesis was about sugar, about like the, about how sugar was basically based on, you know, why the food pyramid was set up the way it was. So her paper was about like Ansel Key study and like how, you know, corrupt, corrupt politicians and greedy corporations and bad science kind of created that issue. And then she goes and she gets her L1 and then COVID happens, right? And she already had in her mind this ambition that she maybe wasn't going to go to college. And so we were trying to think of like, okay, well, then what's the right path for you? Mm. You know, well, I'm like, let's double down on what you already know, right? She's, she had actually been a CrossFit kids assistant coach since she was 14. So she started attending the teens class at, our, at the gym that I was in. I mean, even though my wife was at home, my wife was never a member of that gym with us. It was me and my kids. My kids went to teens and I went to adults. And then after a while, they asked my daughter if she would be an assistant coach at the kids class. And so at the, I think she was 14. I may have it. She might have been 14, 13. So she started as, like helping out as a helper to the lady who was coaching the kids class. And it was a big kids class. They had a lot of kids. That's why they needed the help. And so my daughter did that from the time that she was 14. So she was 17. So she was at the CrossFit gym two, you know, two times a week helping with the kids class. And, and she just loved it. She loved helping the kids. She loved it. And so she was learning how to teach kids how to, because she had a great mentor. So I'll say that loud, Bonnie, Bonnie Billingsley. Hey, Bonnie, she's, she's great. She was the kids coach and she was so good at teaching the kids the fundamental movements that the kids that were coming out of the kids class and moving into the teens class were showing up very well prepared for the teens class right? Because they had the foundational movement. So my daughter was learning all of that. And then she, she had in her mind that, okay, maybe the right thing for her at some point is for her to move into stay in the health and wellness industry, become a CrossFit coach and maybe open up a gym one day. And that was, that was really the mission. That's what kind of brought about the whole idea that we would do a gym Mm -hmm. was that it was going to be about like her being able to do that as opposed to her going off to college, getting a, you know, some, degree that's not going to get her you know 
or, or well, all the all these factors coming together people are already training in your garage they've been training there for years it's the group is growing your kids you, did you sorry i was looking at our time left uh, uh, there's two things i want to say to you did you uh, i want to bring up ansel keys in, in one second um we're, we're never going to be able to finish this today we're never going to get to Chris Cooper and we're never going to get to homeschooling, which we have to get to. And the reason why is my kids have a jujitsu tournament today and I only have 12 minutes. I, I got a, a kind of a serious question for you. Yeah. What are you, could you meet me again later on today and we do a part two? I've never done a part two. Really <laughs> yeah. but the only thing I have on my schedule today is to go to this jujitsu tournament and then, and then come back and watch UFC tonight. But other than that, I would love to like, I, I'm so curious about two brain and homeschooling. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it, 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 it really at it all. It, it all comes together now. And I think the story that we have about why the gym is open and why our family is so integrated into it yeah. is what's got most people intrigued. And what I, the story that I told Chase to Chase is like, I got to connect you with, with Savon. Like I want, yeah. I, I, he needs to hear this. Yeah. And I do want to hear it and I want to hear it in detail. Yeah. Um, let me ask you, did you, you said your daughter did her senior paper on Ansel Keys? She did her senior paper on like the whole idea of corrupt, like the, the, the whole system yeah. That created the 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 sugar industry, put it where it was. He's the, a monster. Whole, yeah. And and, and the, the the funny thing is and the timing was her senior year where she's putting that paper together is the year that COVID happened. Mm, yeah. In the, in the exact what? God. In, in the exact and while she's putting together this paper about sugar, the exact same thing is going on in in this other and no one's talking about it. Can you imagine being an 18 year old kid and you're like, wait a second, I have the answer right here. I, I think I know what's favorite. going on. <laughs> and, 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 and you got two presidents, you got the orange guy and the in the in the dementia guy. They can't even say it. They can't even yeah. say, Hey, just stop eating sugar, you're good. Yeah. And yet she's in high school and she knows. Right. Man. And, that, and, and so that's why we're like, like these guys, you know, I think people go through a you know, you go through the stage from when you're like 18 years old to your in your mid 20s right where where you are learning about life and you're accumulating some knowledge so you can at some point really be of value to society and i right. think the, the goal for us was that our kids were getting that from the time that they were 10 right they were why getting, do you say that why do you say that oh. because they were absorbed the when you know you, you go off to school and you start learning this skill and this trade and this knowledge and, and maybe you don't have the experience yet that someday you're going to use that's going to be of value to a corporation or to an organization so they can sell your services somewhere. Right. Whether, or right. Not you're, okay. Whether you're part of the process or not. And so what I was saying to my kids is like, okay, well, sure. You could go off to Chick-fil-A and I could have you at Chick-fil-A and you could start, you know, at the fryer uh, or sweeping the floors. And that's great. That's work. And, and there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But right now you could work in a facility where you are able to really not only be a contributing member of the cleanup crew, but there's actually value because your knowledge in fitness and your knowledge in nutrition is already above the every single person that walks through our gym. Every you know, all of the people you know, for the most part, especially if they're new, you know, anybody from their mid twenties, thirties, forties, you know, my my kids, I was talking specifically about my kids, have more knowledge and experience in fitness and nutrition than they do. Right. right. And so we're already giving. So I say is like if we move them into the gym environment. And that's a place where they're not just a worker. They're actually a valuable contributor to the business. They can actually provide value to our clients as opposed to just be the person who takes out the trash or does, you know. What is your day job, uh, Javier? Yeah, so uh, I'm actually the, uh, the, the head of a key account program for, uh, for a major corporation. A key, account. key account program uh, like the car kias or like the furniture store <laughs> no no no, so, uh, no. I, like when i say key, key. it's like not like strategic accounts so like the the company that i work for well we have relationships with large customers oh so, okay okay yeah. okay and then so the people so whatever one you have one of your customers for the company you work for is a really big account that requires someone to manage it requires a it requires a person to manage that and they have to manage all aspects of that customer's relationship. Now they, they manage the relationship. They don't necessarily do all the tactical day-to-day -day things. Right. right because, okay. Because it's a big complex scenario and I'm, I won't go into it, but the point is, is that we, we're, we're the people, the people on my team are the people that handle the customer's initial requests. And then they take care of things when things go south, but then they're also there to help develop the next, you know, the next solution that they might want to work on with our company, with the company.
But that's my uh, day job. Um, uh, I thought no plan B meant skipping kid stuff for sake of the podcast. And then he, and then Jeremy says, I'm just joking. You know, it's, it's funny you say that. So I missed a jujitsu tournament for Zelos games. And last night when I was putting the kids to bed, um, I said, I was telling, I was talking to my wife about their geese and how they're in the dryer. And I dried them like really good. Cause I don't want any moisture in them. Cause you have to weigh to w- weigh yourself when you get there. And, um, one of my kids goes, Oh, you're coming to this tournament. And that broke, like, I don't <laughs> oh, miss no. shit for my kids. I don't miss shit. They remembered that one. Though. Yeah. And they remembered the last one I missed. And that, that wow, hit me like a ton of bricks, dude. That rocked me. I, I, I played it cool. I just acted like I didn't give a shit, but like it, maybe it, I'll go. Maybe. Yeah. But I, I maybe ran into the kitchen and dried like the corner of my eyes. <laughs> I was like, Oh, <sighs> I know you're joking, Jeremy, by the way, I know you're joking. Um, and, and so, so from there, that's when you decided she, she, so she took her L when she took her L one, were you actually thinking about opening a gym? Well, yeah. At, so at the point where, we're, and this is in, well, this is like in December of 2019. No, th- no, this was, so this was, uh, so she was January, her birthday. So it was just February, 2019. Like literally she, we took, we took it together. We took, I hadn't taken the L one at this point. I was waiting cause I went and I went with her. And so we took it together we got our results back from her passing, which by the way, was a big deal for a 17 year old, like to pass the L one for, on dude, the it's test. crazy. Yeah. It's you know? crazy. Or like the test. Cause this was like, not the online test. This is the one that you take with the Scantron, like right there, you know, there's a lot of pressure. There were people in the back of the class that showed up on the last day. Cause they had failed it twice. Right. And so here she was 17 years old. We didn't, you know, she was nervous. And so she, uh, everyone's out- nervous. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So she, we found out that she passed and then like, a week later, the world shut down, COVID, you know, and the goal, yeah, we knew that one day we were going to want to open up a gym. We didn't really know how it was going to happen. Um, so when she's got the L1, the intent was for her to get the L1. And then my hope was that she was going to get to like apprentice and help at the gym that we were members in at the time. And then there's a whole other story why that stopped happening. But COVID was kind of the trigger point. It took us home. It wasn't because someone there hit on her, was it? No, 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 nothing, no, nothing, no, nothing at all inappropriate. It was just, you know, it was, it was time for us to move on, but. but How dare you say that, Sousa? Why does your brain always go there, Matt? You're disgusting. I'm sorry. He's a pretty girl, you know, you know, for sure. I apologize. Yeah. My outburst. Thank you, Sousa. But at the time she was a minor. So if somebody had, there would have been trouble with me. Yeah. Right. Right. Hey, even if she's not a minor. Yeah. Yeah, Stay the fuck away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mind your own business. Gosh. Yeah, she's got a uh, she's got a Mike, Mike Sauer, Seven. after almost 800 episodes, I had a dream. Susan called me urgently to hop on the podcast to help interview Def Leppard, who I've never listened to. What is happening? That is maybe the best comment ever. <laughs> I might write that on the on the wall. Um, okay, so here's what I think. Um, here's So tomorrow is wide open, but t- I think today is pretty open too. So what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to jump off here, load up the car, yeah. and we'll start a text thread with me, you, and Sousa to try to reschedule you either for later today. But we'll totally accommodate you. Don't feel stressed at all. Oh, no, either- no, worries, no, We got nothing else going on. I okay. Got, I got, yeah. So we'll either reschedule you, and then the first 10 minutes of the call, I'll have to tell you about the jiu-jitsu tournament. You'll hate that. <laughs> and... um. And then, uh, and then we'll meet again and we'll continue. And I got my notes here and we'll pick up right where we left off and talk about the, um, opening of your gym, how you went from you and your daughter taking the L1 to opening the gym. Uh, and, and I, and obviously I really want to get into homeschooling and how you've attracted other homeschoolers. And I'm guessing how you're using your facility as more than a CrossFit gym, but actually a place to facilitate, um, and accommodate people who homeschool their kids. I'm guessing. Yep. Yep. No, you guessed right. All right. Brother, thank you so much, Javier, for coming on. Great to meet you. Uh, least prepared and maybe one of my uh, most favorite. No one say you always say that, Sevan. I don't always say that. Okay. Uh, brother, thank you. Thank you. Have, see you right. soon. Have a yeah. good day. And, uh, and we'll, we'll start a text thread within minutes and uh, figure out how we're going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy the tournament. Okay. Cheers, brother. Thank you. Damn, that's good. Yep. You were like worried you didn't have enough information and now it's oh. hard to. I was like, who is this guy we're How interviewing funny. today? How funny. <laughs> oh, God, I love this. Uh, so so he's he's on the CAP program. He does yep. two brain. He does the homeschool. Yep. He's got a day job he's juggling. 
and uh, and he's got a wife who calls him fat. Well, he's using the gym as an opportunity vehicle for his kids. That's really cool. Like he, that's like a long term thinking, right? He's like, hey, like they could start here. The knowledge that they're going to gain is going to really make them valuable in society. And yeah. I'm going to give them the building and the platform to start their careers in. Okay. I love it. Yeah. Hey, um, All right. So the the tournament. Uh, so basically, I'm guessing what's going to happen is their first match is at 11, then probably I think that their last match is at one. Okay. And I should be home by. It's an hour away, and I'll probably stop and get them some crazy hamburger milkshake or some treat for competing. So that'll be three. Yeah, definitely. Maybe even get them to stop at a toy store. Damn. We're going to Fremont. We're like going to like a real city. Like I you know, know you, it's, it's going to blow them. No, ahead of time, I would have <laughs> met you out there. They don't make it out of the country very often. Yeah, Fremont's so it's going to blow them away. Okay, so I'm guessing maybe like four o'clock Pacific okay. Standard Time. All right, that should work. That should work for me. And then and then I can watch the UFC after. Okay. Um, all right, I'll bug you later. I'll see you guys in text message. Uh, thanks, guys. Uh, bye bye.